In this video, I'll show you one way to help the subjects of your photos stand out. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.3. For this photo, I would like to make the goldenrod stand out a bit more. I think a good way to do that would be to brighten the goldenrods and dim the background, but just slightly to keep it natural. I'll start with the goldenrods. I'll add a curves adjustment. A brightness and contrast adjustment could also be used if you like, but I prefer curves because it lets you adjust highlights, midtones, and shadows. Not something you can do with a brightness and contrast adjustment. I do have a problem in that the curves adjustment is going to affect the entire photo, so I need a way to limit its effect to the goldenrods. I'll do that with a mask. Since the goldenrods take up only a small portion of the photo, I'll use an empty mask. An empty mask is painted all black, which will make the curves adjustment invisible but I'll use a white brush to reveal its effect on the goldenrods only. If I were to use a mask which is painted all white and would thus let the curves adjustment show through, I would have to paint all around the goldenrods with a black brush to conceal its effect from the background. That would be a lot more work. Before I apply the mask, I'm going to bring the highlights way up. This will make it easier to paint accurately on the mask. You'll see why in a moment. That does look horrible, but it's only temporary. I'll fix it later. With the Curves Adjustment layer selected, I'll select New Empty Mask Layer from the Layer menu. The photo is back to normal because the Empty Mask has made the Curves Adjustment invisible. I'll make sure the mask is selected and grab the Paintbrush tool and set its color to white. Before I begin painting, I'll make sure brush hardness is at 0%. I want a soft edge on my brush. I'll adjust the size of the brush with the square bracket keys. Painting on the golden rods reveals the curves adjustment. Now you can see why I raised the highlights to such an extreme. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be able to see how accurate my painting is. I'm going to zoom in so I can do a more accurate job of painting around the edges of the flower tops. Holding down the Command key, Control key in Windows, I'll tap the plus sign key to zoom in. If you make a mistake, change the brush color to black and paint over it to erase it. I'm going to take my time. It's important to do a fairly accurate job, otherwise it's not going to look very good. This is time consuming, so I'll speed up the video and see you in a couple of seconds. All right, that looks horrible, but I'll fix it right now. I'll open the curves adjustment and click the reset button in the top right corner of the dialog. Okay, back to normal. Now I'll slowly adjust the highlights until I like the way it looks. That's good right there. I'll turn the curves adjustment off and on so you can see the difference more clearly. Looking great. Those CD flower tops could be warmed up a bit. A selective color adjustment would be good for that. But first I'll create a group to save me the trouble of creating another mask. That was a lot of painting and I don't want to do it again. Once the group is created, I'll take the mask from the curves adjustment and apply it to the group. That will effectively apply it to all adjustments in the group. First I'll make sure the curves adjustment layer is selected so it's included in the new group. From the arrange menu, I'll select group. The Curves Adjustment has been replaced by a single layer named Group. If I expand it, you can see the Curves Adjustment indented beneath. Now I'll grab the Curves Adjustments mask with the mouse and drag it over the Group layer until only the Group layer's thumbnail is highlighted and release it. I'll now go ahead and add a Selective Color Adjustment. To place the Selective Color Adjustment into the group, I'll drag it over the Group Layer until the entire Group Layer is highlighted and release it. If the entire Group Layer is not highlighted, the Selective Color Adjustment will be placed above the Mask Layer and would not be subject to the mask. That's not what I want. 
As you can see, it's below the mask layer. Perfect. I'll adjust the yellow color channel. I'll move the yellow slider a little to the right. Moving the cyan slider a bit to the left will enhance yellow. I'll try moving magenta a little to the right as well, since it's a nice warm color. I think that looks great. I'll close the Selective Color Adjustment dialog and rename the group Goldenrods by double-clicking on the group label and typing in the new name and pressing the Return key. I'll collapse the group. Now I'll dim the background. I'll use the Curves Adjustment again. As before, you can use a Brightness and Contrast Adjustment instead if you prefer. This time I'll apply a mask to the Curves Adjustment instead of an empty mask. A mask is painted all white. This will allow me to use a black brush to paint only over the golden rods to exclude them from the effect of the curves adjustment. Remember, with masks, white reveals and black conceals. I'll click the mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel to apply the mask. I'll make sure the mask layer is selected and set the brush color to black. I don't have to be so careful painting over the flower tops this time because I'll only be dimming the background very slightly. I'll open the curves adjustment. I'll pull the shadows down just a bit. All right, that really works. I think the goldenrods are looking a bit too bright. I'll fix that by selecting the goldenrods group layer and turning down its opacity. I think that'll do it. I'll turn everything off and on. Holding down the shift key, I'll select all the layers I added. Very subtle, but that's okay. It wouldn't look natural otherwise. You can use this approach as a framework to help the subject stand out in your own photos. Instead of using curves and selective color like I did, you can easily use other adjustments. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.